There are no safe bets in hockey. After the Tampa Bay Lightning's path of destruction last season, their journey to the Stanley Cup Final almost going all the way, it seemed like a pretty safe bet that they would return to the Stanley Cup Final once again this season. What could go wrong? Stamkos has an expiring contract, but he's still Steven Stamkos. You got Ben Bishop and Nett. You got the triplets who are all young and only getting older and better. You got Victor Hedman on the back end. You got a bunch of really great complimentary pieces. And oh yeah, Jonathan Drouin was not even a significant part of that run. And just think of how much better he'll be with one year more experience. Oops. And what a dirty hot mess the Jonathan Drouin saga has become for the Tampa Bay Lightning. So let's kind of sort through what's happened. Well-documented rocky ride in Tampa Bay for Jonathan Drouin was picked third overall in 2013. Very highly touted. A lot of people were saying, hey, Martin St. Louis out the door, but you know who will replace him in a couple years? This Drouin kid. Low ice time, low ice time, no ice time, low ice time, low ice time. Finally, all right, I want to trade. And for those of you who yell and scream about Toronto thinking it's the center of the universe, or at very least the hockey universe, I I want you to consider this. When Jonathan Drouin and his agent Alan Walsh had first announced publicly that they had requested a trade away from the Tampa Bay Lightning, Drouin had recently been demoted to the Tampa Bay Lightning's American Hockey League affiliate, the Syracuse Crunch. And that day, the Syracuse Crunch were in Toronto to play the Toronto Maple Leafs American Hockey League affiliate, the Toronto Marlies. Tons of media attention there, tons of access, but let's chalk that up to just a coincidence. A few weeks later, Jonathan Drouin takes the morning skate in Syracuse with the Crunch. Everything appears to be hunky Dory, he's playing really well in the American Hockey League, and then it is announced he has been suspended without pay, and his agent announces, no, Jonathan Drouin is now done with the Tampa Bay Lightning until he is traded. Right before the Syracuse Crunch played who? Ah, you said it, not me, the Marlies. Now, I tweeted, perhaps hastily, that this reeks of something that the agent Alan Walsh told Drouin to do. And when I tweeted that, I was shocked at how many people DM me like, you know what, I, here's something about Alan Walsh. Some of you might be like, oh, you know what, that name's kind of familiar. Yeah, he was a pretty uh, big figure on Twitter during the lockout. He was very outspoken. And you know what, I think it's easy to criticize him here. I think it's easy to say that something sinister is going on, that he's in Drouin's ear, and maybe it appears like that. But stuff is coming out that he's just representing Drouin. And that really a lot of this is Drouin's doing. It's at the request of him. I like to think I have a decent pulse in the hockey world. And there's something I've noticed in new hockey media. And I've also noticed it in myself, to be honest. Traditional or mainstream media. And yes, I'm well aware that I'm saying this on Sportsnet's official YouTube channel. But traditional or mainstream media tend to take the side of the team in situations like this. Whereas all the blogs and people on Twitter, and I'll definitely lump myself in there, tend to take the side of the young player. And I think part of the reason for that is, A, by and large, the online community is relatively young. And I just wonder if we see a little bit of ourselves in the player and we think what we would do in that situation. And because there's nothing at stake for us, we go, yeah, screw it, stick it to the man, demand a trade, ask for all the money in the world. Which is fine and way easier when you're not actually Jonathan Drouin. But the reality here, I'm not sure Drouin actually has any leverage. Entry-level contracts don't give you any leverage, really. If the Lightning really wanted to, they could just sit Joanne. They could just set him. For a year and a half? Yes, for a year and a half. Now, if you have an emotional and reactionary general manager, then yeah, maybe they trade you right away. <laughs> oh, you know, feeling the pressure. This is Steve Eiserman, man. I'm not trying to insult the guy, but he's a bit of a robot. And I just don't know if you want to get into a poker match with a guy who I can't confirm has functioning eyebrows. How can you ever tell what he's feeling? Now, that's just what I've been reading, that Joanne has no leverage, entry-level contract, and all that. However, no leverage, guys? Now, for most of the season, the Lightning have had injury issues, they've been struggling, and they've kind of been outside of the playoff picture in the Eastern Conference. I don't know if you've been paying attention or anything, but they're 7-2-1 and one in their last 10, and they've won six straight. They're currently second in the Atlantic. By the way, the top two teams in the Atlantic are both from Florida. With the prospect of Steven Stamkos potentially leaving in the summer, and with your team so good and so close to winning it all, you kind of got to go for it, don't you? Sure, the Lightning can sit on Drouin, but does that make any sense? Let's pretend there was no bad blood whatsoever. John Cooper didn't play Drouin that much, but he didn't hold any animosity towards the team. He didn't make a trade request or anything. You could make an argument that, well, the Lightning have this prospect. He was picked third overall, very highly touted, 
but he's having difficulty staying in the lineup. But they're such a good team, why not trade him for a piece you can take into a long, deep playoff run? Well, that makes sense. After all, his value is super high. Now, the AHL demotion probably hurt his value a little bit, but not really. The public trade request, that's a bomb. And then saying, I'm done with this team, I'm not playing, and he gets suspended without pay, his value is dropping by the hour. If you're Steve Eisenman and the Tampa Bay Lightning, oh, you can sit, but uh, maybe don't. Here's the one thing I hope out of this whole situation. I hope Jonathan Drouin is sure. I hope, and it's already too late, I hope heading into this, Jonathan Drouin was ready for what was about to happen. I hope he was ready for the drama. I hope he was ready for the potential pay cut, because after all, he's not getting paid right now. And I hope he's ready for this to follow him around for the rest of his career. And that's rightly or wrongly, I'm not taking sides on this, but a holdout does follow you along for the rest of your career. They become famous, they become stuck to you. Sportsnet.ca just published a piece with nine famous holdouts throughout NHL history. And you can name a bunch of them off the top of your head probably. Pavel Burry was a huge one, Alexi Yashin was huge, Danny Heatley was massive. Teams will covet Drew in for all of his potential and all of his talent, but they might also look at this situation and go, eh, it seems like kind of a pain. And again, I'm not saying that's the way it should be, but I'm saying that's definitely the way it is. So what do you think is gonna happen out of this? What do you think is the most likely scenario is there going to be a long holdout? Is there going to be a trade by the time this video is uploaded? And who comes out of this on top? Jonathan Drouin? Can the Tampa Bay Lightning get a decent haul for him? Do they both come out winners or do they both come out losers? It's a mess on both sides. It's an all-in gamble on both sides. We'll see who has the right cards.